وأركان الصلاة أربعة عشر قيام في فرض وتكبيرة الإحرام وقراءة الفاتحة وركوع ورفع منه واعتدال وسجود ورفع منه وجلوس بين السجدتين وطمأنينة في فعل وهي السكون وإن قل وتشهد أخير وجلوس له وللتسليمتين والركن منه اللهم صل على محمد بعد ما يجزئ من التشهد الأول والمجزئ منه التحيات لله سلام عليك أيها النبي ورحمة الله سلام علينا وعلى عباد الله الصالحين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأن محمدا رسول الله والتسليمتان والترتيب so here are these 14 uh, pillars. We look at the translation and some of the explanation along with that to complete uh, coverage here. It says the pillars of prayer, they are 14. The pillars of prayer, 14. The first of them is standing in an obligatory prayer. He says, قيام قيام في فرض. So this is something important to keep in mind. That from the pillars, and the pillar, by the way, a pillar is something that uh, the prayer cannot go without. If uh, a pillar is missed in the prayer, then the prayer becomes invalid. Right? So if someone were to remove one of these pillars, the prayer would be void. Um, especially if it's done intentionally. If it's done uh, unintentionally out of forgetfulness, then, uh, then the that part of the prayer becomes void, that raka that the person's in until they either go back to make it up if possible or to make up an entire unit. So this is important here. The first part, qiyamun fi fardin, which is to stand uh, in the prayer. Uh, he says here, even if it's a salah, uh, which is fardu kifaya, like al janaza. So we have to stand in that prayer. And of course, this is based on ability. So if someone's unable to stand, uh, then they can pray while they are uh, seated. If they're unable to sit, then they can pray while they're on their side. If they're unable to be on their side, then they can pray, of course, in any condition they find themselves. Number two, he says, Takbiratul Ihram, which is the opening a takbir, which is to say Allahu Akbar in that particular order. And there is nothing else that will stand in its place. You cannot say uh, Allahu uh, Akram. For example, uh, or any other uh, type of praising or takbir of sorts, but this is uh, that which is required, Allahu Akbar. And the pillar here is the actual pronunciation and utterance of the words, Allahu Akbar. The raising of the hands, Allahu Akbar, is not from the uh, actual requirement in terms of the pillar, but that comes up later. Uh, in the other descriptions uh, of the prayer. Um, how, how basically the Sheikh Al-Ba'li, he says, uh, the person, uh, the, 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 how do they say this Allahu Akbar? Is it said loudly or is it said it internally? Is it said in the mind or in the heart? But it should be said, uh, the, the minimum amount due to fulfill this pillar is a person utters it uh, in a volume which um, he himself can hear, right, in a volume that he, that he himself or her herself can hear. So it doesn't have to be shouted very loudly, but it cannot be uh, withheld in silence, something that uttered uh, internally. The next portion here he says, um, recitation of Al-Fatiha, and this is in every unit of the prayer. He says, That it is uh, for every unit of the prayer for the Imam. al mamum is the one that follows the Imam. And Munfarid is the one that's praying by themselves. However, the Imam will bear the burden of Al-Fatiha. Uh, so here he uh, points to something that, that it should be read even by the Ma'mum, even if the Imam were to bear the burden of the Fatiha uh, during uh, the prayers, it should still be read by the one following. And this is done during the uh, 
pauses of the imam. So sometimes maybe the imam is reciting al-fatiha and he is pausing after every ayah. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. And then there's a short enough pause for the person behind him to recite. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Of course in a, in a, in a, in a voice unheard to the neighbor. Um, and then he continues. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. And then there's a pause and then he is able, the one behind is able to recite. And if unable to do that, maybe he's reciting without long pauses. If there's a moment after the prayer, uh, after the completion of Al-Fatiha, before the beginning of the next chapter, then the Ma'mum, the one following the Imam, can recite during those uh, few moments of silence between the two uh, chapters. Uh, the next uh, unit is the, or the next uh, pillar of the prayer is Ruku' which is the bowing position for every single unit of prayer, the Raka'ah. Um, and the minimum amount of the Ruku' how far does a person have to go? The Sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam is that they straighten their back enough that if something was placed on top it would not fall off. Like a cup of water it would not spill out. This is the complete Ruku' Sunnah. However, the minimum amount required to meet this pillar is that the person is able to with their hands grab to their knees. Right, to bow just enough to where their hands can extend down to grasp their knees. This is the minimum amount which is sufficient. He says the next one, number five, is uh, minhu, which is to raise up from the ruku' <clears throat> and uh, it's not invalidated if the ruku' is made long or they're raising. Number six is i'tidarun, which is to rise completely up from the ruku' from the bowing position, meaning they have to raise themselves completely to a standing erect position. If they were to <coughs> come from the ruku' halfway up and then Allahu Akbar into sujood, then they would have missed this pillar i'tidal. Number seven is sujood. Of course, this is uh, uh, no doubt about it. And the uh, minimum uh, type of sujood here is that a portion of every limb be placed on the ground uh, that was commanded. The Prophet Sallallahu he uh, said that he was commanded and to prostrate on seven limbs. Uh, and so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said uh, Al-Jabha which is uh, the forehead here between just between here this area and he pointed to the nose. وَأَشَارَ بِيَدِهِ إِلَىٰ أَنْفِي and then he said the two hands وَرُكْبَتَيْنِ uh, the two uh, knees وَأَطْرَافِ الْقَدَمَيْنِ and the, uh, the tips of the feet if you will the toes and this is reported in Sahih Bukhari wa Muslim um, so these are the seven uh, parts that have to be placed on the ground to complete the sujood so the minimum amount is that uh, he says a portion of those seven parts be placed on the ground in order for the sujood to be uh, valid. Uh, number <coughs> eight is to rise from the sujood. Raf'un minhu is to rise up from the sujood. And number nine is julusun bayna sajdatain. And that is the sitting between the two sajdas. So now we know there's two sajdas that uh, happen during each rak'ah. And one of the pillars is the actual sitting between those two prostrations. Which leads us to number 10, Tuma'ninatun. Uh, uh, here is the, uh, essentially what it means, a tranquility. Um, as he says, Tuma'ninatun fi fi'lin, that you are tranquil in your actions. Uh, that you are tranquil in your actions, he says, wa hiya as wa in qalla. That it is um, stillness, even if it's for a short period of time. So essentially that in the movements of the prayer that the person if when they are in the middle of the movements and they stop they should be if just for a moment still and tranquil the body should be at rest so there should not be a, a movements so erratic that it's a continuously moving prayer but for each portion the person should stop to where the body is at rest uh, if just for uh, a moment, he says, 
wa in qalla even if it's just short as as the translation even if it's short meaning short in time he goes on and he says um uh, the final tashahhud which we know is the last portion of the prayer before the taslim uh sitting for it and sitting for the two salams at taslimatain at the sitting portion of that the tashahhud al akhir and the sitting for the tashahhud al akhir and the sitting for the two salams um so here the imam rahimahullah mentions uh wa ruknu minhu meaning from the tashahhud al akhir so this is the pillar of the last and final tashahhud is that a person say uh of course uh, allahumma salli ala muhammad ala muhammadin here they that they be, begin their prayers or that they pronounce or send prayers upon the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam after what is sufficient from at the shahud al awwal so here basically um the tashahhud al akhir comprises of two pillars the first of those is the tashahhud al awwal what is said and the minimum amount of that is at tahiyatu lillah salam alayka ayyuhan nabiy wa rahmatullah salam alayna wa ala ibadillah as-salihin ashhadu an la ilaha illa allah wa anna muhammadar rasulullah and then you say allahumma salli ala muhammad and then that is enough to suffice to filling this pillar so what most of us have become accustomed to saying is perhaps much longer than that and this is dealing with another category in terms of what is uh, sunnah what is recommended but here is what is sufficient meaning you cannot say anything less than this and so this is good to know for a person that is trying to keep the prayer light and short if there is a need for that there may be a need that, that someone keep the prayer light and short and we talked about that before perhaps um if between the adhan and the iqama uh, there may not be uh, sufficient time to make a very long prayer but you can keep the prayer uh enough to fulfill the the minimum requirements in order to keep it short enough to make sure that you join the prayer as it begins and also for those that are making up other prayers they may want to keep them short um short and sweet so after that he says what taslimatan the two salams to conclude the prayer on the right and on the left and then finally uh, at tartib uh the tartib meaning the uh, sequence of the prayer um so the tartib here between uh the pillars um so if someone were to uh, take one of the pillars and put them in front of another maybe they make sujood first and then they made the ruku' then of course this would invalidate the prayer or if they were to mix up the appearance of the prayer in terms of its pillars one in front the other behind mix up the order this would even if they were to complete all of them so we know that there's qiyam and we know that there's ruku' we know that there's uh, there's i'tidal standing completely from the ruku' we know that there's sitting and there's prostrating so if someone were to come and to rearrange the prayer but still fulfill all of those pillars in a different order they would have missed the final and last pillar which is sequence so it would render the prayer invalid even if they were able to um, produce all of the previous mentioned pillars